Most of us have seen the fools in the gym that are just doing things completely wrong. However, while you're sitting there just micromanaging all those idiots that are not lifting correctly, you could be sitting there doing some certain movements incorrectly because these movements are just so common that most people think that they innately know how to do them correctly. Today, we're gonna highlight these movements and these mistakes so you can use proper form and you can maximize the complete movement so you can grow your muscles to its fullest potential. That sounds interesting, let's hop into it. Number Number one, the leg press. Out of all the machines in the kingdom, this is douche central. Because this is the only machine that these tools can actually pack all the 45 plates in the gym. They'll hog all the plates, pack up the machine with it, and they can actually somewhat move it and fool themselves to think that they're that strong. Now, the machine itself, it's great to target your glutes and your thighs if you do it correctly. Treat this as a squat. Your foot stands about shoulder width apart if you were standing up. Then you want full range of motion, meaning knee bends don't count. Your calf raises don't count. You want to bend your knee to the point that it's at a 90 degree angle and that your knees aren't going past your toes. This is full range of motion and where you're going to get the best bang for your buck for your thigh. Number two, the push up. You're probably thinking, hey, this is simple. I got this down pat. If you're anything like me, you probably do a lot of mistakes that I was doing my whole life. Hand placement can vary depending on what you want to target. You can go from a wide push up. You can also do a narrow hand position for your push up that's going to target more of your inside pecs and also your tricep. But in general, if you're doing a basic push up, what you want is for your hands to be directly underneath your shoulder. Then you're going to want to lower your butt and your back to make sure your whole body creates this very straight line. Imagine a string being tied from your ankle to the tip of your head. You want zero interruptions and you want it to be dead straight. Damn. Man, can I just say, working out and getting a pump is so much easier when you got good music in your ears. These Raycons are freaking amazing, bro. These things do not fall out. It doesn't matter how hard you're moving, if you're jumping, you're doing HIIT workouts, plyo workouts, weightlifting, or just regular body weight. These Raycon in-ear headphones are amazing. Now, huge shout out to Raycon for sponsoring today's video, but like I said, boys, these for working out are amazing. So Raycon, if you don't know, is a brand started by a celebrity called Ray J. He's into music, so you know he likes good audio. He created these headphones and these right now they're absolutely killing it. They're my go-tos when I come work out at the gym every day. And what I love about these in-ear is that they're truly wireless. And usually when I come to the gym, I bring them in this little pod that I carry in my pocket. So the cool thing is that they're rechargeable. So you just open the pod, you put them in here. Boom. They're recharged, they're good to go. You can carry them anywhere. So whether you're working, running chores, or at the gym, these Raycons can come with you wherever you go. Another cool thing about the Raycon headphones is that they're completely customizable, come in multiple colorways. So whether, depending on your personality and kind of what you like or vibe with your style, Raycon has you covered. The ones that I picked up are black and gold. I really dig these, but they got multiple colorways and they also have other headphones. If you boys want to check out these Raycons, I'm going to have a link down below. There's also going to be a special discount for them. They're super affordable as it is already. With that discount, it makes them a steal. Now, boys, I'm going to continue showing you all the exercises that men do wrong at the gym, and I'm going to do it while keeping these in my ear. As you can see, the beautiful part about these is that they're shaped like your ear canal, so when you put them in, these things just get stuck and they lock in. No matter how much you jump or move, they ain't going anywhere. So I'm going to put these bad boys on. Let's keep going with Number this Number three, the pull-up. When you do a pull-up on your chin-up, first you want your body to be straight and not jerking or swinging all over the place. Then you want your chin, like it says, chin up, to clear the bar up top. And then when you reach the bottom, you want to lock out your elbows so you can have full extension. Half reps will yield you half results. And finally, when you're at the bottom, engage your shoulders. Don't just hang there like a dead piece of meat. When you engage your shoulders, you're going to set your body up for the strongest pull possible so you can get as many reps out as you can. Number four, tricep extensions. Most guys will attack this workout straight up while swinging their arms as they try to yank the weight down. This usually happens to eagle lifters that have more weight on there than they can actually handle. What you want is a slight bend at your hips, still keeping your back straight. Think about 45 degree angle. This will give you enough room to be able to reach full extension with your triceps. And also, you want to make sure that your biceps are engaged and locked at your sides. You want to make sure they never move. Doing these two little changes is going to ensure that you keep that tension at your triceps so you can maximize this movement. Number five, 
crunches. Another simple one, you've been doing it probably since you were five, you think you got it down pat. You probably don't. You wanna put your hands either at your sides of your temples or right across your chest. This way you're not using your arms to yank your head forward and instead you're keeping the tension at your core to make sure you're maximizing this movement. Rolls us on to number six the plank. Such a simple movement, it's so effective. The plank is a beautiful exercise that everybody can do from the comfort of their home. If you ever wanna do a quick workout that's gonna burn your core and also engaging other parts of your body, do the plank. It's easy, you can do it anywhere. The problem is so many people do it wrong. You wanna make sure, again, almost like the push-up, that you have a straight, uninterrupted line with your body. What most will do to kinda of release that tension from their core is that they'll create this TP effect at their hips or at their bottom where they raise that area up. This, like I just said, removes the tension, makes it easier, and that's why most people do it. But when you're cheating the movement, you're just cheating yourself. Instead, what you wanna do is make sure your elbows are directly under your shoulders, engage your core, keep that line from your ankle to your head completely straight, or as straight as you can. Take a deep breath and just engage and hold on for dear life. Number seven, your squats. It's one of the best exercises. I used to hate squats, and now I freaking love squats because I've seen how important it is to build powerful legs. It's the best exercise to just boost testosterone overall. It's important that you have proper form and that you don't ego lift on this movement because it's so easy to get injured. Keep a strong chest. You want your chest out and strong so you can engage that lumbar. Your feet should be about shoulder width apart. Then you, you're gonna wanna take a deep breath before you do the rep to brace your core as you go down. This is the most important part. You want to make sure you reach at least parallel or a 90 degree bend at your knees, all while making sure that your knees aren't going past your toes. What happens is that naturally for a lot of people, they'll start going up on their toes because the weight distribution is now leaning forward and what happens is you won't be able to lift as much and this can cause serious injury. Your goal is to lift from your heels, meaning that when you're coming up, if you can keep your knee behind your toes, you're gonna keep that weight on the back of your heel so you can actually push up. And finally, number eight, lunges. Here I see a lot of mistakes. You'll either get these guys that take these massive steps that you're overreaching and putting excessive strain on your ligaments because they wanna cover more ground as possible, or you're gonna get dudes that just fly through them without proper range of motion, again, because it's easier than going all the way through. To do a proper lunge, it all depends on how short or tall you are, but on average, you wanna take a step about two to three feet forward. Then, think about creating two 90 degree angles with both of your knees as you come down. If these angles are acute or obtuse, in any way, shape, or form, it means that your steps are either too long or too short. And finally, make sure your knee is hitting the ground or at least coming as close as possible. Lower your body controlled and bring it up without causing knee damage. And that's basically it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to drop us a like down below. Also, don't forget to check out our sponsor, Raycon. Like I mentioned, these are the best headphones to work out. Doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's hit or weightlifting, these suckers never fall out. If you wanna check them out, they'll be linked down below. That's it for me today. See you next time.